AMD's second entry in its 9000 series GPU lineup has arrived in the form of the RX 9060 XT. Sure, this isn't technically the second model because the popular 9070 got the non-XT and the XT model, but they are still keeping things humble compared to the competition, which has released four different models with six variations since January. The card in this review is the Gigabyte Radeon RX 9060 XT Gaming OC. It aims to deliver 1440p gaming at 60fps and above thanks to FSR 4 and FSR 3. On paper, it seems more than capable thanks to its 16GB of GDDR6 RAM, 32 compute cores, 2048 stream processors, 64 AI accelerators, 32 ray accelerators and its boost frequency of up to 3130MHz. But I'll get into all the tests in a bit, for now let's quickly go through the GB card itself. Like other gaming OC models, the GPU packs a pretty simple black outer shell that just does the job. It features RGB lighting on the side of the unit with a slide over cover that lets you light up the Gigabyte logo or just some random block of RGB instead. Gigabyte is now shipping the GPU with the slider part stuck in place with a removable sticker. Likely to keep it shifting while in transit. It's a small detail but nice to see. The GPU is powered by a single 8-pin PCIe connector that is rated at 160 watts of total board power. AMD says you'll need at least a 450 watt power supply for this GPU, which is quite a small requirement compared to other GPUs on the market. The card comes with two DisplayPort 2.1a ports and one HDMI 2.1b port. Three ports in total, which is also quite different to see on this card. The empty metal spot on the card looks unworldly to me. I haven't reviewed a GPU without four ports in, well, I don't think I've ever reviewed a GPU with a blank spot on the back. The card is also a decent size. It measures 281mm in length, 118mm in width, and is only 40mm thick. Overall, this is a great looking GPU that oozes that typical gaming OC flair I do enjoy from Gigabyte. It doesn't have the loudest design and perhaps could be seen as boring, but it does work. AMD claims that this GPU is targeting a $349 price tag. Of course, the RRP and what you buy this GPU for are two very different things. We have learned from the RX 9070 launch earlier this year that AMD's pricing claims are almost impossible to find in the real world, so you have to keep that in mind when shopping around for a card. Essentially, this is a mid-range GPU. The XT model of the 9060 should be considered over the non-XT model in my opinion, and although I haven't played with the non-XT model, I would recommend this only because mid-range is already borderline pushing the limits here. There's also an 8GB model of this XT card, which is also an option for those looking at 1080p gaming perhaps. But again, 8GB is kind of problematic these days depending on what you're playing. 16GB is future-proof even for 1080p gaming. I do worry that 8GB is just going to be a problem, say in 1 or 2 years time for 1080p, unless you're playing at 720p and who is playing at 720p. With that being said, I installed the Gigabyte Radeon RX 9060 XT Gaming OC in my PC. It was pretty simple, the card doesn't come with any mounts or fancy extras. You just get the GPU in the box with a piece of paper. Given the weight and size of the card, you likely don't need any mount here. Once installed, I ran some tests. I did slightly tweak the card's power limit. I increased the power limit by 10% using the AMD Adrenaline software. AMD's software, while being overhauled earlier this year, does provide some incredible breathing room for tweaks to both CPUs and GPUs. These tweaks are also quick to toggle between and offer the best one-time click scenario for overclocking and they're probably the easiest way to overclock the GPU and CPU without diving into the BIOS and all those complicated settings. In the performance tab, I clicked automatic overclock, which increased the game clock by 105 megahertz. I ran some tests. I targeted 1440p here because this GPU is built just for that. I did the usual FSR on and FSR off test to show you the scalability of the GPU while at the same time the raw performance.
The card does hold up quite well during tests. The results show that even pushing games to their max visual settings produce 60 FPS in most cases with ray tracing enabled while piggybacking on FSR. Assassin's Creed Shadows was smooth with maxed out settings with FSR on quality mode. Of course, as soon as you start moving away from FSR, the GPU does start to buckle. But keep in mind that this was running with ultra everything and ray tracing enabled. Settings that aren't usually always possible without splurging on the very best GPUs. The card then peaked at 51 degrees during my non-overclock tests. The power draw was sitting at 181 watts, with the fan revving up to 1730 RPM. The clock speed was hitting 3254 MHz. Then after enabling auto overclocking on the GPU, the clock speed averaged 3285 MHz and the fan peaked at 1839 RPM. The power draw then rose to 193 watts, but the temperature still hovered at around 51 degrees Celsius. The fan noise wasn't noticeable at all even at the higher RPMs. My case fans and cooler simply overshadowed the noise from the GPU to the point where I didn't notice it at all. It also seems that Gigabyte has sorted out the GPU fan curve from being stupidly high out of the box on these GPUs. I know from past AMD GPUs I've got from the brand, the fans would hit 100% at 40 degrees Celsius. At least that wasn't the case here. AMD FSR 4 games of course benefited more from this GPU than FSR 3 games. Sadly, the roster of FSR 4 titles is still rather lackluster. Thankfully, Assassin's Creed Shadows recently got updated to support the tech, and that game always makes for an awesome benchmark. I would have loved to see Doom The Dark Ages implement this tech perhaps. Regardless, the card does pack some decent performance. On paper at 1440p, this is likely seen as the replacement to the RX 7600 XT, thanks to its performance boost of anywhere between 25 to 65 percent. The card handles ray tracing better than the 7600 XT2. Comparing it to the closest 50 series card, the 9060 XT is better than the RTX 5060 across all tests, but it is slower than the RTX 5060 Ti. However, the differences are minimal compared to the RTX 5060 Ti. I do wish AMD would just increase their RT performance a bit because the GPU is still fall behind when it comes to ray tracing. So is the Gigabyte Radeon RX 9060 XT Gaming OC any good? I would say yes, it is a great 1440p card. Its FSR support makes it versatile across the majority of games. Of course, FSR 4 would be even better as the performance games and sheer improved quality of the upscaling and frame gen would just make things stand out. But FSR 4 is still rolling out at a snail's pace. Even the latest game releases just don't have the technology. We are six months into the year and the lineup is quite frankly abysmal. So much so that you can't even look at FSR as a selling point for these GPUs. But the card held its own. It showed some fantastic thermal performance and a lot of breathing room for power tweaks and overclocking. If you win the silicone lottery on these cards and you manage to keep them cool, you'll really be able to go to town on the total board power settings and overclocking. That alone makes the performance you see here even act as a baseline of what you could possibly get. So that's my experience with the Gigabyte Radeon RX 9060 XT Gaming OC GPU. Huge thanks once again for Gigabyte for sending this my way to have up for the embargo. I really do appreciate the support as always. Be sure to check out the other hundreds and thousands of GPU reviews I have up on the channel and visit Glitched on Online daily for gaming tech news and reviews. Until next time, farewell.